Welcome back everybody, my name is Gamma Trap, one word, and today we are covering wood. There are several videos already planned for this entire wood series, so be sure to subscribe and click the bell if you'd like to be notified when each video drops. But without further ado, let's get started. Alright, so this is our second video in the wood series. The first video we had, we covered wood texture. We are going to now make a stump, like a tree stump, and that just takes the stuff we learned from this and makes it just a little more complicated, a little more organic. We're going to have, you know, roots and all that fun stuff, but we're going to skip ahead a lot of the stuff we talked about in this wood texture video. So that's the first one. So I would suggest if you're confused about anything we go over this, you go back and watch this video right here. All right. Now wood has a lot of different colors that it can be depending on the tree and it can go from white to black to red to yellow, tan, brown, all of those things and even often a combination of those colors. But for the default tree, we're going to use these colors right up here, which again we go over in the other video in great detail. Also the brushes we're going to be using are just default brushes that you could find in any program. It's just the hard round press opacity and the soft round press opacity. The program that you're using might not have these exact same brushes per name, like they might not be called the hard round press opacity, etc. But essentially every program has them, they're just oftentimes different named stuff. But, but hard round press opacity is just a hard round brush that changes the opacity depending on how hard you press, and the same goes for the soft, except it's a softer brush. I should make sure every brush that I use is a default brush that is in pretty much every program, so this is what we're going to be using. Now the first step is we're going to make a shape, and then we're going to make a clipping mask. So first let's get started by grabbing a middle of the road kind of color, and this is going to be a tree stump. So let's find out where we want it. We have the top right around here, it's going to come down, it's going to have little roots. And there's a million little ways to make these shapes. You can actually use a lasso tool if you'd like. It's the way we do that. So we kind of draw in where we want stuff. Like that. And then we would just paint over that or use the paint bucket tool. Now I'm actually going to select inverse here. And just show you the shape we made. Which actually is not a bad tree stump, but it's a little small. It's a good starting point. Let's fix it up though. <laughs> now the tree stump that we're going to be making here is going to have bark and an internal sort of like guts of the tree itself. So make, I'm making these notches here to help illustrate how far down the bark will be compared to the stump itself. We're going to add little little notches. And I kind of wanted to give it a little, a little stem of a leaf. I just thought of that. I was like, yeah, it's adorable. Okay, so now we're going to make a clipping mask, but first we're going to make just a regular mask by coming down here, clicking mask, and you'll see that I added a little extra window there. Now on our paint, turn to black and white, and we're going to switch to black, because black acts as an eraser, whereas white brings it back. And you'll notice it's actually drawing on this little mask area over here. So before we get too far in, we're actually just going to add little, little grass texture on the feet here. And this is just mostly for me, for later, for my extra credit. If this is your first video of watching mine, which I, 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 again, I would recommend you watch the previous wood tutorials. That's a wood texture tutorial. Uh, but in case you just, you know, we already kind of knew wood texture pretty good. My extra credit that I like to do is I like to make it look good on like the pedestal. This little pedestal thing I painted up. And usually that involves if there's grass, I make it look like, you know, it's got the grass kind of coming in. Or if it's snow, it's got like, you know, snow and all that stuff. But now you'll see I kind of cut out areas where the grass is going to go. Right now, it's just it's kind of sitting on this dirt thing. It doesn't look like it quite fits. But we're going to get into that a little later. But for starters, now we have our shape. So let's make a new layer. And we're going to right-click that layer and do Create Clipping Mask. And this could be called different things depending on whatever program you're on. But it's almost across the board called a clipping mask. And that essentially just means no matter where we paint, it's going to paint on just the shape that this clipping mask layer of ours that we just made is clipped to. Just that shape right there. Now because the light is coming from up here, moving down, this spot right here is going to be pretty much the darkest. So we're going to grab a soft brush. We're going to get our uh, dark color. Make that brush nice and big. And we are going to start putting in that dark spot. Don't make it too like solid, kind of gentle with it, you know? Down the bottom needs to be the darkest, but everywhere else kind of has a little bit of, little bit of leeway. Now this, because trees have roots, uh, there's gonna be points in time 
where I always end up drawing something to explain things. So from bird's eye view of a tree trunk, let's make this a little easier to see. Say he's got a tree. It's got roots, right? Here's the grass. <laughs> bird's eye view, we're looking straight down at it. Okay, so say the light source is over here. It's gonna come over here. It's gonna hit that, but this area, it's got a shadow. It's gonna come over here and hit this, but then this has got a shadow. And that shadow kind of goes all the way up to the trunk area, and all this is pretty much in shadow. But see how this is? Because it's kind of the light source comes out here and hits this, it kind of skims that. So it's pretty, it's kind of like a middle ground right there, but past that, everything under that line gets a shadow because it's hiding from the light. So we have to treat that the same way we would everything else. But because it's closer to the light source itself, it's not gonna be like as strong as this area over here. It's gonna be kind of light. And it's only gonna be on this side of the root. Over here, there's still gonna be light because light's kind of hitting that root right here. Not all of it, but you know, enough. You can make this as light or dark as you want to help get the point across. All right, so now the bark we want to be darker than the internal area of the tree. Make a new layer, make that a clipping mask also. So if we mess up, it's just on this thing. So we're gonna just, we're just gonna do one of these. Let's make the internal guts of the tree. And this will look silly at the moment, but that's just for a bit. Don't worry. Now, because it's his own layer, we can actually just erase and not have to worry about messing anything else up. So this bark is coming up here. And it's almost like, think of how uh, like a bowl or a bird bath is. It's got a little wall here, a little ridge. And imagine this middle section that's lighter is like a uh, water and the tree is hollow. Just imagine that. It's a little easier to help kind of figure that out. Now, which is great about this is we have just set for ourselves the hardest part. Next is just wood texture, which we've already gone over, so I could just kind of move on along there. But the difference between the wood texture one that we did and this is the direction, the direction of the wood. Inside the tree, you'll often find rings like this. I'm being very sloppy, but you know what I mean? That's perfectly fine. We're gonna have rings, but we're also gonna have grooves like we've been over in the wood texture one. Now also another big difference is the grooves aren't just straight lines on trees. They move with the tree, the direction of the tree. So it kind of makes you have to think, you know, what's what's the, if you have to like think of the wood in like 3D terms in your head almost, which direction is the roots in the tree moving, you know, all that kind of stuff. Aside from that though, that's pretty much the biggest differences. So I'm just gonna go over, go on ahead real quick and just kind of put on this wood texture here. Now because this is on the inside, you can actually give it a little shadow real quick. I'm gonna try and do this without making it too crazy. And that, real, just real quick, we'll fix it later, but <laughs> right now, that just kind of tells us, okay, that's where the inside of the lip is. And it's also a good idea to start thinking about the lip here as a 3D sort of object. The edge here of the bark has an edge of its own.
sorry to keep starting and stopping here, but uh, a lot of times there's also weird deformations in trees. So for example, there's often holes where like insects and birds and all kinds of weird animals kind of like made their nest and dug into. So it's good to keep things as simple as you can while still being interesting, but, but one of the tools you have at your disposal to make things interesting are those interesting little uh, deformations, you know, where bugs and birds and all kinds of stuff are like digging holes in the tree. We're also just knots. Now trees have just knots sometimes, sort of like this over here. It could be where a little branch was growing or, you know, it could be where a branch is going to grow or a branch broke off. Who knows? It's a million little reasons why trees might have or not have, you know, knots. They're all, they're all kind of different trees, you know, <laughs> some nice to think about in this cruel world. The, the main eyesore of this entire piece is that is that is the guts. We're, we're about ready to start doing that. We're about ready to start messing with the guts, I think. But it's its own layer, so now we can actually make it into a clipping mask. Or we can make a clipping mask on top of it. But let's actually fix it up real quick. Good enough for me. Okay. New layer. Make this a clipping mask. So now, everything we do to it just happens to the inside of that tree. So let's actually, actually, find the grooves that we made. It's like this one right here. Now... We'll make the cool rings thing in a second, but first, I also like to give it like these, you know, these, these like big old, big old breaks. And we don't want them going in the exact same direction because why? I'll let you, <laughs> I'll let you answer that. In case you can't though, it's because we don't want it to be boring. We want them to be different widths, different depths, different shapes different directions if we can, but not like perpendicular crosses and stuff. We want them to all be kind of going in roughly the same direction, but you know, different. And right now they're all roughly the same depth. They all look the same depth. They're all the same color. So we can lighten some of them up. And one thing that's actually bugging me real quick. There we go. That's, <laughs> that's a little better. It was bugging me so much. It was just standing. I was like, Hang. now it's cool to have weird skewed trees, you know, but like <laughs> there's a limit. Okay. All right, so now we're gonna make another clipping mask below the grooves. So here's the grooves. And we're gonna make this one almost the same color. We're gonna grab one of these lighter colors. And now we can very, with very thin, you can add rings if you want. Just like, you know, make little spirals. And it's under the groove, so you're not gonna like damage the groove layer. Which sounds pretty awesome. You think the groove layer. It's hard to see. There we go. That's easy to see. I'm going to do this. Just so you can see it better. And because it's easy for me to go up and down. I'm going to grab that color. Make my brush actually a little thinner. Remember the whole point of stylized pieces. Is to be as simple as possible. While still being interesting. That's pretty good. Oh, this is gonna bug so many people. I gotta fix this real quick. Re Maybe a little more. Okay, now we can clean up the, the grooves also, which truth be told, I don't like zooming in too much in these pieces because if I do, then I'm just never gonna stop moving around. <laughs> Cause like usually when I'm working, I'll just, I'll just zip. I'll just, that, that canvas will just fly every which way. All right, so now let's focus on the inside of this lip real quick. So this, is our tree layer. Now I zoomed in here just to make it easier to, to see, you know, because there's a lot of weird details here. 
Now, to pay attention to where the light source is coming from, and it's just like how grooves work, you know, in uh, in everything. If the light source is coming from over here, this direction, you know, this way, <laughs> then things that are closest to, to it get the shadow, and the, the size that's farthest away get the highlight. Now, it goes out saying that the bark where you put these little notches should also have grooves. And now that we actually have a really good close-up look, I can really start like cleaning this up real quick. <laughs> and actually on the topic of those grooves, we can actually make them more bark-like, which makes me happy because we're all close up on them now. Rounded corners, some of them get kind of sharp. And now we can actually work on some of these details that we put in earlier. Okay, now I told you I would do this. Okay, so I'm gonna do this, all right? Let's grab a dark green. Actually, it might get a little darker. The bottom area. And now let's grab a nice light. I'm gonna hit the inside of the leaf with that. There we go. <laughs> How adorable is that little thing? Look at that. Anyway, <laughs> sorry, let me let me have my fun. I actually need to clean up the edge of that. You all can come in here and, and, and enjoy some tutorials and stuff. Just, just, you just have to let me have my fun from time to time, okay? That's all it is to it. All right, so now we're going to do a, one more clipping mask on the main trunk layer here. And this one, I have a soft brush. And we're gonna do that, that brush thing again where we kind of figure out the lighting. So we're gonna grab our side brown here, which is the one that I set aside specifically to be a good multiply color. We're gonna gently hit the back and sides of this tree, bottom area, and I'm gonna erase that spot where it's hitting the plant because I want that to be all shiny and pretty. <laughs> and again, any layer you put here, you can change the opacity and make sure it's, it's how you want it to be. Let's zoom out. See what we've done. It's not too bad. 
All right, next comes the extra credit that I like to do. So just, I'm just gonna put some uh, some grass kind of growing from the bottom area and make it look like it's actually fitting on the pedestal here with the light source I'm gonna give it. And then that's it, really. See you in a second. There we go. Just like I said, for just the extra credit, I like to make uh, the object typically look kind of like it fits on the pedestal just to make it clean up a little. So I just added a little bit of grass there, you know, a little shadow, nothing crazy. Again, if any of this stuff confused you, make sure you go back to the first video in the wood series where we cover the wood texture. And that covers the colors, the grooves, lighting, fun stuff like that. To where if you're like, oh man, I don't, like, why'd you skip over that? Just, it's all explained in that video. So be sure to go watch that if you're curious or if you got lost at all. Anyway, that's it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. Like if you liked it, dislike if you disliked it. Thank you so much to my amazing patrons. I appreciate the ever-loving out of you for supporting the ever-loving out of me. And I'll see you in the next video. Take care.